When you're starting off your software engineering career, it can be a bit overwhelming to figure out what you need to work on. This is something that I definitely struggle with when I first started. There's always something trendy and new in the tech world, and you're sitting there wondering, should I be learning all this new tech? Seems very fancy, seems very enticing. And as someone who is new to the field, you can easily get carried away. And I certainly have done that myself. So here's the thing, if you spend too much time doing the wrong things, you're going to realize that you'd end up stagnating your career. But if you identify the right things and set up a solid foundation, you're going to be able to fast track your career. So it's really important that you identify the right things to work on, especially when you're setting up your foundation. So in this video, I'm going to recommend some of the things that work really well for me and some of them are things I wish I had done differently. In the end, it has really helped fast track my career and it has helped me land some lucrative deals at some large scale organizations. So one more thing before I get started. These tips are for anyone who is looking to get started in their career or for someone who is in the early stages of their career and looking to accelerate their growth. All right, so when you're first starting off, your primary focus should be on building a solid foundation. I talked about this briefly in the introduction, but here's the thing. When you first start off, your team is not really gonna expect any significant contributions from you. It's highly unlikely that you'll be expected to contribute towards architectural decisions or even work on large tasks. You're most likely going to be assigned very small items and make small contributions and mostly spend time learning new things. So it's in your best interest to make sure that you spend as much time to absorb new things and upskill yourself. So tip number one is pick one language. It's easy to get confused and get carried away by trying to learn several languages, but it's really important that when you're starting off, pick one language and get really good at it. If you're someone who has already landed your first job, well, use the core language that your team uses and get really good at it. If you're someone who's looking for a new job or looking to get started, well, pick one of the top languages out there. I'd recommend picking between Java, JavaScript, mostly Node.js as a backend engineer, C Sharp or Python. These languages cover a majority of the market demand, so you'd be in a good position to land your first job. Once you identify which language you want to learn, make sure you spend enough time to learn at least 80% of that language. And a good way to increase your knowledge or expand your knowledge in that particular language is to learn your data structures and algorithms. Start implementing small applications that you know are kind of end-to-end. -end. Do some I.O. operations with them. Just spend enough time and you'll learn a lot about that language. Go read up the documentation, look up some tutorials. So whatever it takes, try to get up to like 80%. The goal here is not to know everything about the language, but to be really comfortable using it, to really understand the language so that if there's something you need to look up, a quick Google search is all you need and you're right in there with the solution. The second tip is learn version control. So if your team uses version control, which it should, learn that. Get to know how it works, the exact semantics around it. If you're starting off, learn Git. I'd recommend Git because it's super popular, it has been for a while, and there's a whole ecosystem around it. Learn Git and possibly Git Flow because in the end, you can learn how to work with version control by yourself, but it's a whole different story working with multiple teams or team members, learning how to collaborate, building a system that works for you to write your code in a develop branch and then push it out into staging and production environments. There's a lot that goes in there, but it's quite simple once you get the hang of it and you just have to learn it once. That's pretty much it. So go ahead and learn Git and Git Flow 
if you're using something else like SVN, well, go ahead and learn it. The, the fundamentals of version control are the same. So it doesn't really matter which you pick. You can always make the switch later on as you need. Now, the third tip I have is learn object-oriented programming and solid principles. So let's start with object-oriented programming. There's a lot of hype around functional programming and there is definitely a place for functional programming. A lot of people are talking about object-oriented programming being an old school way of doing things and functional programming being the new thing. And that might be true. That might very well be the case in the future. But as it stands, object-oriented programming is used and adopted by many organizations and it's still useful. It still has its place today. So I'd recommend that you start off with object-oriented programming, master it because it's really important for you to understand, especially when you're starting off. Again, it's one of those things that once you get the hang of it, it kind of sticks around with you forever and it becomes super useful. So once you learn and master object-oriented programming, move ahead into solid principles. Solid principles are basically a set of principles that help you write clean, extensible, and maintainable code. So you can think of it this way. When you start off by writing an application, it's usually small. Then you add new features to it, you make changes, you find bugs, and so on. That means that you will spend a lot of time reworking the existing code. You will want it to be extensible. You would want it to be easy to fix bugs, to introduce new features, to extend, and so on. So if you write poor code that's really tightly coupled, that's very difficult to go in and make changes, it's gonna take a lot of time and effort to make these changes. And in the industry, time is money. So what makes you a good coder is you are able to see how to structure a project, how to implement a solution such that it's maintainable, it's extensible, and it's really easy for other developers to collaborate and work together. So it's really important that you understand the foundation of how to do this. And I think solid principles are a great, great way to get started with this. I try to adhere to solid principles even today, and I know a lot of developers who do the same. So it's a great place to start. Once you learn it, it's again one of those things that just stays with you, and it just makes you a more complete developer. Now the fourth tip I have for you is learn concurrent programming. So as a backend engineer, it's super crucial that you are familiar with concurrent programming. It's rare that you're going to execute things synchronously. Things are going to be run asynchronously and you have to become comfortable with it. This is probably something you would have learned in your bachelor's if you did a computer science degree. But if you're someone who's self-taught, then I'd really recommend that you brush up on these principles. There's quite a bit around it. Like you could get yourself into trouble if you don't know what you're doing. So I'd really recommend that you learn the foundations of it. And then whatever language you picked, make sure you understand how to implement concurrent solutions in that specific language. And every language has a different way of offering concurrency. So make sure you understand how it's done and how to do it in the language that you chose. So the fifth tip is learn memory management. This is super important and is really foundational knowledge that way too many experienced developers don't really know. And they end up writing code that causes issues that are really difficult to debug and fix. If you've heard of memory leaks, well, you know how difficult they can be. And if you haven't heard of them, I hope you never have to hear about them. So learn memory management and each language kind of has different ways to do it, but fundamentally they're all the same. Just make sure you understand how garbage collection works in each language. There might be subtle differences. So whichever language you picked, just make sure you understand the concepts behind memory management in that language and you should be good to go. So tip number six is design patterns. Design patterns are essentially tried and tested solutions for commonly occurring problems in software engineering. 
when you come across problems and you will when you're writing software. What you want to do is avoid spending time and effort reinventing the wheel. In other words, you don't want to be thinking about solving problems that have already been solved. So design patterns are really important to be an efficient and clean coder. And in terms of architecture and building maintainable code, these go a long way. So make sure that you understand design patterns. One of the resources that I recommend is the book Design Patterns by the Gang of Four. So I'll leave a link in the description down below. You can go check it out. It's a very famous book and some of you might already know about it. You might have read and learned about it. Super famous and popular. But if you haven't, go check it out. That's a great resource to learn. If you don't want to purchase the book, you can also find plenty of free resources out there. It's all over the internet. I'm sure you can find plenty of resources. So important, go ahead, learn it. Design patterns are essential. Most interviews will try to check your knowledge in design patterns. So it's really important that as a backend engineer, you learn design patterns. So tip number seven is databases. Now, I wouldn't recommend that you become an expert in databases, especially in the first couple of years of your career. But it's important to understand what the differences are between certain databases. Because if you think about it, there are so many different databases out there. Why, why do they keep creating new databases all the time? Well, the reason is each and every one of these databases, they are good at certain things and they're bad at certain other things. So when you're building especially a large scale solution, you want to consider using certain databases that are more of a match for the kind of problems that you're solving. So you need to understand them and you will later on in your career. But early on, it's important to understand the foundational knowledge of databases. There's a lot more to it than just saving data. Um, so I would recommend that you start off by learning structured databases or relational databases. So these can be MS SQL, uh, PostgreSQL, or you know MySQL, or so on. Once you kind of get the hang of relational databases, I'd recommend that you move on to non-relational databases. One that's very famous is MongoDB um, that deals with documents. So once you play around with these and try to expand your knowledge, um, you'll learn that each of these databases are good at some particular thing. And it's really important that as part of your foundational knowledge, you comprehend these minor differences because as you grow into your career, what you're going to be doing is gaining more and deeper knowledge in certain areas, like especially databases. So learn the foundations, learn relational databases first, move on to non-relational databases, identify the differences and without overwhelming yourself, try to understand how performance works in databases. If that's too much, I'd recommend leaving it out. You're always going to have plenty of time in your career to expand your knowledge in this subject. It's going to be super important as a backend engineer, but if you can add it to your arsenal of foundational knowledge. It's not very common to find young engineers who have a lot of knowledge about databases and so on. So if you add it to your skill set, that's definitely going to place you way higher up in the rankings of candidates. And the final tip is API development. So building APIs as a backend engineer kind of becomes your role. In some way or the other, you'd end up building APIs and APIs can get complex. There's a lot that goes into building a successful API, especially if the product itself becomes successful. If you're serving millions and millions of users, you're going to have to do a lot of things to make that API successful. There's the aspect of security, there's scalability, resiliency, um, there are transactional patterns. So I'm, I'm mentioning a lot of these things, but when you're starting off, learn the basics of API development. Obviously, you'd learn how to integrate APIs, external APIs, but learning how to build your own APIs are super important. So when I say learn how to build APIs, I don't mean just get 
Node.js, set up a server. So that's pretty straightforward. Anyone can do that in five minutes. But what I mean is understand the details behind it, learn some principles, maybe learn REST principles and learn what it takes to build a REST API and learn how to build secure, scalable, but simple APIs, especially at the beginning of your career. All right, guys, so that's all I have for you today. I just want to say that if you are someone who is already in a software engineering role, starting off and aspiring to be a backend developer, I'd recommend that you focus on these tips and they will go a long way to making sure that you fast track your career. There are not many developers out there who have the foundational knowledge or the right foundational knowledge. So if you spend your time investing in these, you'd build a super solid foundation. And I guarantee that you'll become extremely valuable in the backend engineering market, especially the entry level market. There are very few engineers who know all the things that I just talked about. So if you're someone who can upskill yourself to be at that level, you're gonna place yourself in a very high category. So I hope you enjoyed these tips. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought about them. If you think they're useful, if you have different ideas, let me know. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this as well. So if you like this video, I'd really appreciate if you could click the like button. If you want more content like this, subscribe to my channel.